Well, it's my birthday, March 22nd, and uh, I thought there were signs that spring was on the way, but unfortunately, this is what I get for a birthday present, more snow. I think I'm going to go inside and answer some of your bear hunting questions. All right, the video that I did where I put out the call for your bear hunting questions was obviously very successful because I've uh, done two videos so far, and this will be the third video on answering your bear hunting questions, and... I think most of the answers have been correct answers, so we're, we're going along pretty good here. Let's go ahead and touch on a few more of them. In relation to spring bear hunting, where I hunt and bait in South Central Wyoming on public land, I have no mass crops or berry crops in the spring. In fact, I have no mass crops at all anywhere for that matter. Spring food seems to be grasses mostly and deer or elk, fawns, and calves. What baits would you recommend to use for spring baits? I do not have access to bulk baits. I mainly use popcorn and breads with used fryer oil when I can. I get whatever other sweets I can score from around town. There's good news and bad news in this. Of course, the bad news is that if you don't have the access to quantities, large quantities of bait, like a bait supply dealer that could sell you 55 gallon drums of trail mix, um, you're at somewhat of a disadvantage, but the other side of that coin is that the bears have almost no spring foods available to them, so you really have the opportunity to use just about anything that bears like to eat. And uh, I've seen where in some of these areas that popcorn can be pretty good, where you know where I hunt in Minnesota popcorn's not very good because uh, there's a lot of competition with much better quality food so popcorn can be good um, you mentioned the breads with the fryer oil that can be good especially if you got good lots of fryer oil you can soak those breads with and and mix in the sweets uh, pretty much sounds to me like you're pretty well doing it right and uh, getting as much as you can on the ground and uh, feed those bears the best food that you can get because it's better than what they can get out there in the field and in the spring as you know and as you mentioned uh, they're mostly feeding on grass and clover and so forth and when they come across uh, some bread with fryer oil popcorns pastries and things like that you can hold them pretty well everything's really a relation to what else is available I would think your main objective is just to get the good bait, the best bait you can get and keep it out there and uh, you should do pretty well. <clears throat> okay, I was gifted four 40 gallon barrels of sugar. What would be some great ways to implement into my bear baiting? It, you know, this is not a question I really anticipated and uh, I would say just eat it. Uh, well, no, not really, but uh, that's a lot of sugar, and it's, I would assume that it's going to keep a long time because you certainly cannot use that much sugar all at once, and uh, I, would, I would mix that sugar in with your regular bait, and that might just mean throw a couple of cups of it in with a bucket of whatever, and it would really improve the uh, attractiveness of some of the poor quality baits such as say dog food, um, popcorn, breads and um, and you know if you got stale bread and you mix sugar with it it's possible that you could uh, you know put some water into sugar and you know make it soak into things better. Um, I've seen where sugar really improves the quality of grains like corn and oats and stuff like that so I guess that'd be my suggestion it's going to take you a long time to go through it all, but just use it little by little, mix it in with what you got. That's that's pretty interesting. That's the uh, first time I've ever heard of a situation like that, but certainly not a bad situation. Why is it that bears get scared of human scent, but when dog hunters and humans go on the bait, the bears still come around? The attractiveness of the bait has to be better than the negative aspects of the bait and the location and the scents and smells that the bears are going to encounter there. And um, here's the thing with hound hunters, and I don't have anything against hound hunters, I believe we all need to 
stick together and fight the antis together because we stand together or we fall separately. But most hound hunters that I know don't bait in order to get bears to come in during the daylight because they don't really care if the bears come in during the daylight or not. In fact, most hound hunters will go out and put their dogs on the bait right after daylight so um, they don't really care if the bear came in a half hour before dark or at five o'clock in the morning or three o'clock in the morning. They don't have to take the precautions that we do as bait hunters that are hoping to get a bear to come in in the daylight where it's legal to shoot it. Yes, bears will tolerate a certain amount of negative activity around a bait, but generally it'll cause them to go nocturnal. And when they do go nocturnal, the chances of us shooting them are pretty low and the hound hunters still have a good chance at it. So that's just the reality of hunting in areas where the dogs are legal and baiting is legal. So what got you into bear hunting? Do you agree that bears are made to hunt with a bow? And the second part of that question is the one I'll answer first, and that is absolutely, baiting bears is absolutely perfect for bow hunters. And you know where the bear is gonna be, you can wait for the right shot, you're gonna be close. Um, it is the ideal situation for managing bear populations with archery equipment. It's, it's ideal, it's fun and uh, you know we can get quick clean kills which of course is what we're all after in uh, in any kind of hunting and so baiting bears with archery is uh, they're a match made in heaven so to speak so what got you into bear hunting that's a question I don't really know the answer to but I will say this um, grew up in Iowa and it was a bow hunter serious whitetail bow hunter for many years and I always had a fascination with bears ever since I was a kid and I'd seen bears in the mountains and so forth and uh, had encounters with bears when I was younger um, in Washington State and, and uh, other areas and um, just kind of always read books about bears and stuff like that so I was always kind of fascinated by black bears. I just decided you know I would like to shoot a bear with a bow and then I'll uh, have a bear rug on my wall and then I'll just move on to something else. So I believe it was in 99 that I booked a hunt with Chris Ford in northern Minnesota up by Lake of the Woods and I end up killing this bear right here that's uh, a chocolate uh, was my first bear and um, I thought I would just move on to other things but I got absolutely hopelessly addicted to bear hunting and I just fell in love with the with the baiting them, with the seeing them, with the sign, with the adrenaline value of being close to bears. And uh, as time went on over the next few years, I uh, just became fascinated by the trail cameras and the pictures and learning to manipulate the bear behavior and so forth. You know, just two years later, 2001, I actually moved to Minnesota, started baiting on my own. And, and so I've been doing that for 20 years now. And um, the the passion is still strong for it. I'm very, very, uh, um, very much passionate about bear hunting and baiting and, and everything that has to do with it. And, and so I guess that's how it got started and not in the way I anticipated it at all, but here we are. All the guides that I've been at bear camp with seem to use deep woods off to keep the bugs at bay. Does using a thermocell go against the idea of introducing a new scent to the bait area and turning a bear off to that bait? Great question. So we've talked quite a bit in the past on other videos on this channel about how much bears like consistency at a bait because it gives them a comfort level. And introducing a new smell the day you hunt can be negative in many ways to uh, having a bear come in because um, it is a different part of a package that he's not used to and it might be just enough to cause that bear to wait until after dark or just not come in. This is especially true with the bigger more mature bears. So a thermocell definitely has a scent um, that a bear can smell and you've got the thermocell with you so if the bear smells the thermocell he probably can smell you too. And so the key to this is that we need to 
use a thermocell at times when we're baiting, uh, when we set up. I use them when we're setting up the bait because I'm going to be there for a few minutes while I, uh, you know, I'm attaching trail cameras and barrels or cutting logs or whatever it takes. So I always have a thermocell with me there. So we've already introduced the scent of the thermocell, so it's part of that package, that bait package of smells and scents and sounds and and sights and stuff that the bear can expect and it increases their comfort level. So thermocells are definitely something that we they've changed the sport of bear hunting. They're so much better than using any kind of a spray. We just have to introduce that smell earlier and so it's not something completely new on the first night you actually go out to hunt. <clears throat> you mentioned a place to bait high up on a hill so evening thermals send the wind down to where the bears might be. If the bears are coming from below my bait and I'm hunting in the evenings, I'm sending my scent to them. Would it be better to set up lower than where the bears are coming from so I only have to worry about my scent for the first hour or two that I'm in the stand and then be in prime position for the last hour when it cools down? So this is a person from Wyoming who's asking a question about hunting in fairly steep country. I wish I could answer this question better, but I'm not sure that I have the uh, the authority to answer it better than what the, what I'm about to give you because I've hunted in the West um, just a few times, Wyoming and Idaho, where it's steep country, and it seems to me that when you have a valley, a creek, ditch, uh, whatever, coulee, whatever you want to call them, that getting a bait at the head of that valley, so the scent flows down the valley will help get the bears on the bait faster. And then it seems like if you can put your stand at a side hill away from the bait, you're generally better off. But that also puts you in a position where the bear, depending on where it's coming from, might encounter this, your smell before he gets to the bait. Like I said, I wish I had a better answer for this, but I, I just don't have as much experience with this as I do with some of the other type of, uh, of baiting, I think the main thing that I would say is basically I think I would have to just look at each situation differently. Probably just have to go, you have to go with your gut, I guess. And when you look at the bait and you look at the surroundings and you look at the terrain and you think about the bears are likely to come from over here, then I need my stand here or I need it over here. And... Um, you know, I, I wish I could give a more definitive answer that would come across the screen to you, but, but really I think I'd have to look at each of them individually. And the only thing that I would say is that once the bears develop patterns of how they're approaching the bait, they, it becomes pretty obvious how they're getting there. And I would wait until um, you have a pretty distinct pattern developed before you actually put the stand up and choose your stand location based on the direction they're approaching the bait. So I know that's not a great definitive answer, but it's it's all I got at this point, so I hope it helps. <clears throat> Many bears have been killed using things like vanilla, molasses, honey burns, and etc. You seem to be opposed to using them. Why is that? Okay, so that's a that's a good question because I can see why someone would think that I'm opposed to using those types of things when I wouldn't say I'm opposed to using them, I just think there's a better way. And like honey and molasses and things like that, you can go buy them at the grocery store and people do and they attract bears, but we have so many things that are so much more convenient and so much better nowadays that I don't need to do a honey burn, I don't need to carry a jug of molasses with me or anything like that. And that's why I just use the sprays. And you can just pick whatever, if you want blueberry or cherry or bacon. You got Gold Rush for opening your baits, which you can mix with fryer oil. Super sweet smell that permeates the whole area. And then just carry a spray bottle of Northwoods Bear Products is what I do to every time I check the bait, uh, check the camera, uh, replenish the bait. I just hit the trails a little bit, spray, spray around and it's all you got to do. It's just so much more convenient than carrying different things and trying to pour and mix and stuff like that. Um, so I'm not opposed to, you know, 
glugging molasses out of a jug or you know carrying a bottle of vanilla or something like that it's just that I feel like using the sprays is so much better way and more convenient and easy to deal with so anyway that's the questions for today thanks for asking the questions um, feel free to uh, leave more questions in the comment section below hit the like button if you would it really helps out this channel and if you're not a subscriber you're looking at the absolute best parenting channel on the world wide web and on youtube so you should be a subscriber so thanks a lot we'll see you on the next video